and good evening and welcome to Speak Up. This is coming to you live from the studios of OCTC TV here uh, and on the campus of Owensboro Community and Technical College. My name is Kirk Kirkpatrick. That's all the time we have today because we're celebrating uh. The judge's birthday, so uh, we're party, okay? Uh, uh, or you want to stay here? For th you're I'm buying. Not, that's right. We better get back on topic. <laughs> Welcome right. to the show. We're here to answer your questions about fiscal court. The, the show is actually produced by Davis County Fiscal Court in an effort to give all of their constituents uh, an easier access uh, and accessibility to the court. So this is your opportunity to phone in your question, 686 4615, or you can text them as well. And the entire court is here. Birthday boy, yeah. who is, you know, for 45 years old, you look pretty good. And um, you need to visit Judge, your optometrist. <laughs> uh, Judge Al Mattingly, happy birthday, thank sincerely. You, Kurt. And, and you know, we have a special audience out here. I want to we, recognize them. I asked you before, ain't she cute? She is. She All is. right. And my son, Will, is out there. Judy, the judge's wife, and son, Will, they're just part of the studio audience tonight. Hey! Oh <laughs> You've got big plans for um, the judge tonight. I, okay. I shamed Will. I, call, I had his mother call him and say, are you going to take your dad out to eat? See? Well, there you go. What? Nothing wrong with that. Our uh -huh. other uh, fiscal court commissioners are here, too. Charlie Castlin. Good evening, Kirk. George Wathen. Good evening. Glad to be here. Glad to have you here. And uh, Mike Coger. Good evening, Kirk. Nice to have you. Well, the big news, if you didn't see it on TV, this was a big day in Davis County history. And the uh, fiscal court today, you all budgeted a lot of money and raise the taxes zero. zero okay well let's talk about the budget it actually round of applause did, there it oh. did increase the budget did increase a little over it two is. percent yeah but you didn't have to raise taxes this is the seventh year seventh, seventh year, year seventh row. budget seventh budget that we have created since we were elected uh we stayed within our revenue general revenue streams uh, you know, we didn't need to raise taxes. Now, to be honest, uh, our main tax producer is property tax, and uh, folks' property increases, and so we get an increase in revenue. It's a modest increase in revenue, but we're able to do all the things that we've been doing all along and more. Uh, you know, we, we bought a lot of capital equipment with this budget. We continue to pay roads, not quite as aggressively, but when, when the lowest temperature this winter was 62 degrees, you don't have much uh, tear up on So roads. you put the savings in your pocket so, too. So we so. put the savings because last year we pay 45 miles of road at a much lower cost for the asphalt. Uh, you know, we, we do the things that are necessary to keep the, I like to call it, keep the trains running on time in, in our community. And, and we also are, are cognizant of the needs to, to provide for public safety. Uh, and public safety is more than just police and fire and dispatching. Public safety is roads. Public safety is public health, the health department. Public safety is the sanitation and, and the landfill. So we recognize that public safety comes in many different forms. Well, let's take a look at the budget. Uh, I think most people just say, hey, they're not raising my taxes. I'm okay with everything, mm -hmm. but there's a reason that you were able to do that. And actually on top of this, and I'm kind of waving your flag here, but I'm a taxpayer too. In the last six years, you've not only been able to keep from raising taxes, mm -hmm. um, but you've actually lowered the debt that the county owes by over 30 million dollars i think pretty pretty close to that what now uh, how is that even possible are you do you have that much money that your the taxes ought to be lowered i've got an or, accountant <laughs> that's true uh, i've got a realtor and i've got two plumbers <laughs> and we know the value of a buck we know where that dollar comes from it comes out of other people's pocket we treat those dollars even more tightly strength more we're more cautious with other people's money than we are with our own, so it, it's that's how we do it. Now, p a part of our, our budget was about $18 million in landfill. Uh, you know, we, our, I think it was $8 million was the operating cost in the landfill, maybe a little bit more, but remember this, taxpayers don't put any money into the landfill. That's an enterprise uh, 
business, which means that it money pays for itself. Pays for itself. Right. We've got probably, I don't know, I think the total value of the landfill, revenues, expenditures, and all that was like $18 million. Maybe $7 million mm -hmm. of that is in reserve. It's restricted to close and take care of post-closure things. Uh, you know, we had $8 million, over $8 million in the jail. Uh, we, we put over $2 million into the sheriff's budget. We're going to put over seven hundred thousand dollars into nine one one to pay our fair share of nine one one. There are many agencies we did not cut. I don't believe we cut any agency funding. We continue now. We didn't fund any new agencies, mm -hmm. but we we did increase agency funding to a couple uh, for special projects. Uh, you know, next year that'll go away. So we're, we're very, we, we like to partner with the community. We really have become known for, for don't come to me and ask for 100% of it, but if you want to raise some money yourself and have fiscal court participate, we're willing we'll help to, you. we will help, right. we will partner, because that really shows the community's commitment to the mission of that particular well, agency. And if you're willing to get out and raise some money yourself, then you're vested. A absolutely, absolutely. Uh, let me just ask, I'll start with Mike and go down the line. Just some of the, the highlight one or two things that you're most proud of of the budget um, and uh, your snapshot of this year's budget. Well, you know, uh, we've all worked really hard, but I'll <coughs> definitely give uh, more credit to the judge and, and uh, Jim Hendricks and that staff. Uh, They've really done. They, they've really worked hard, put a lot of hours in, and the department's heads have done a great job um, in, in the prior commitments with these commissioners and the judge before my time. Uh, they, they've done a good job training them. I'm going to say, you know, you're not just going to get everything that you want. Uh, if you can prove that you need it, we'll look at it and, and maybe approve it. So, you know, I think that's some of the, the main points for me, and just being able. For us all to work together, no heated discussions, don't have to have them. We're all in a, in a different type of business, and I think that's really worked great for us. Commissioner Wathen? Um, I think in general, one of the, the biggest impact, one of the biggest factors that impacts the budget is uh, the way the employees have bought into it and right. the way we, we operate in as many aspects as we can. We operate as a business. We try... Uh, anytime we need a piece of equipment, first thing we try to do is see if we can fix it before we replace it. So we, uh, those are that's an example. But we do. The employees know that anytime that they can they can uh, see an opportunity to save some money, they should do it, and they do. And because of that, we were able to do the budget that we have. In fact, I always say the budget process really started a year ago, because. They, 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 they held down the spending. They were able to, to where we were spending maybe money in one spot, we stopped, now we're able to spend it in another. For example, um, at the landfill, we, we needed a lot of equipment this year, and we were able to purchase that equipment because they have been holding the cost down. So we were able to buy a lot of big, heavy equipment that we need and, and it didn't strain the budget at all. And it's because the people in the landfill have been doing such a good of a job of operating and holding expenses down. And there's different, different things they do. For example, um, our safety, our, we've had a big push in safety the last four or five years, and, w and we've brought our, our accidents way down. That not only saves the, the money that we would have spent on an accident, the piece of equipment or the person that needed the medical um, treatment, but it also saves us in our insurance dramatically. So there's a lot of things like that that the, that the employees have bought into and that they're able to help us save the money so that then when it comes time to buy something and spend money, it's there and it's available. And that's why we ran it like a business and that's why we're able to do what we're doing. But Charlie Castlin, Commissioner, is uh, the accountant on the uh, court so i'm especially interested in where you think uh you all did a really good job and where their challenges are in the you future you really want well, to Kirk, ask I, a, an <clears throat> accountant well, to comment Kirk, i'm going to just say that <laughs> there it's real basic for me 
First of all, I, I preach to my clients in my tax business and my kids all, all, their, all their life, debt is not your friend. Mm -hmm. and, and we have been very uh, good about focusing on we're not going to have new debt. As Commissioner Wathen just said, we positioned ourselves through, through being frugal to, to where when we knew these, through looking at our future needs, we knew where the years that we were going to need to be spending money and we position ourselves to where we can pay we can buy these capital items and pay cash for them we, we don't have to borrow for that and we've paid down as you said earlier our debt close to 30 million dollars and, and to me that's a big deal and 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 the other thing so often when utility companies such as OMU come before whatever organization they have to to get rate increases, one of the things they always talk about is, well, we got to be able to service this debt. Right. We don't have the debt. And, and so we're, we're able to position ourselves to be able to pay those things, those bills that come due, and pay cash for them without borrowing. And that allows us to not have to raise taxes. And, and it's, to me, it's, it's just really basic. And the other thing is, to, to um, as both of these commissioners have said, is our employees have truly bought in to our approach to what can we do better this year than we did last year. And, and, and to also look at when we develop our budget, is this a need or is this a want? And, and sell to us four individuals who have to vote on the budget, sell it to us whether or not it's gonna be beneficial. Just today I complimented Jordan Good. I'm um, glad you bring we, it up. Jordan Johnson, he's, he's our purchasing guy who reviews all the bids when they come in. And we made a purchase, and, and we did several today. I forget which item it was, but we didn't take the low bid. Salt and, spreaders. Uh, salt spreader. Yeah. And, and the reason we didn't, I thought it was a scale. It was salt a scale. May have been scale. May have and been and scale. we didn't yeah. take the low bid because of the maintenance costs, the ongoing maintenance costs that we have. Mm -hmm. There, there were three th reasons he gave, but one of them was the ongoing maintenance costs. The, the, the setup time, by the time the, the low bidder would get it set up, we would have spent more in maintenance yeah. dollars than, than what we're saving by using that low bidder. And, and so we went to the next bidder, and, and the other sidebar that makes that a, a better choice is they're out of Evansville and not Louisville, so when we have to call for service, mm -hmm. it's just 40 miles away and not 90. So, so the Kind of making business decisions yes. uh, based on practicality. Right. The, and, yes. the, you know, the, to, to go back, landfill as an example, the two things I'm most proud of is this commission does not purchase before we need. We were requested to buy some equipment last year and even talked about the year before to start land farming next year, and we didn't even have a permit yet. And I said, no, get the permit, then tell me when we're <laughs> going to start and we'll buy the equipment. Well, two years later, we're going to buy the equipment. You don't purchase three or four years out anticipating. The second thing that I'm most proud about this year, and I, I have to comment, is that after seven years, I actually had some department heads that I called and said, you don't need to come in and explain your budget. The first year, we went through it, we fought, we, I mean, this year though, we had several department heads and big departments that what they submitted made sense, their explanation was mm -hmm. proper. We didn't need to talk to them about it. Your questions at 686-4615. Our first one is from uh, Abel, who is a Davis County uh, resident. Does the judge and the commission, do the judge and the commission feel that the widening of 54 will actually happen with all the funding issues at the state level? That's a great question and certainly a big need. If you've been out 54, seeing what's going on, what's the latest? Answer is yes. Uh, it's been delayed some because it's state funding and it got caught up in what's called Paul, the Paul's 50. But I would let you know that we are trying at the state, and I just came back from Washington last month, and the federal level to get the funding changed over to federal monies. If we can get federal monies, and they are actually doing an, a... Um, 
oh, uh, uh, environmental review of that project right now, which was a requirement before we could get federal funds. So we're trying to get some federal funds, which will be what we call good money because it's there. Uh, if we don't, it's going to get done. It's just going to take a little bit longer. And that would simply speed up the process? Because the federal funds the would speed, speed the process up. Did, um, one thing about the budget, I just happened to see some highlights of the Henderson County budget. They must have passed theirs today as well, or they're talking about it. Mm -hmm. But their jail fund was over $10 million. And I was just shocked at that because certainly federal, our jail is- Federal prisoners. Okay, so they, the vast majority of their prisoners are federal prisoners at fifty-five dollars a day, as opposed to our state prisoners at thirty-two to thirty-four dollars. So that's a day. why it's higher. And that, that's why. Mm -hmm. the, and and actually, the funny thing is, the back last year, if you watch, uh, and my good friend Judge Brad Snyder down there, he really inherited a, a an issue because they depended. Uh, 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 mightily on coal severance funds, and they lost almost all of those coal severance funds. Where we might have gotten two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, now we're down to twenty five thousand. Think about they were getting four, five, six million, and mm -hmm. now they're down to a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand. That's they real actually, money there. They actually borrowed money from the jail fund and paid it back to them their jail surplus. Hmm. So they are fortunate and, and, and Jailer Osborne and I have been trying to move and we think that we are going to start getting more federal prisoners in. So we, we hope, you know, our jail's overcrowded though. Every, everybody's jail is overcrowded. There's talk about opening, uh, reopening a, a for-profit prison to take care of the overcrowding. What would, what now, would the, your position be on well, that? Well, my position is this, why in the world are you paying a for-profit prison $60 a day and only paying me $32 a day to house a prisoner? Well, they would tell you, you've got more programs, so like substance abuse programs. We've got those programs. We do those things. Uh, we teach them a trade. We, we do all those kinds of things, but for some reason the state doesn't want to pay uh, the local counties and their jails. Well, if they'd pay us $62 a day, we might be able to have more programs. Right. Amen. 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 So that's my position. Uh, or go ahead and open the for-profit prisons and let us send all of the, since my son is sitting in the audience, and for lack of a better word, all of the more undesirable prisoners to those for-profit prisons so that we don't have such an issue in keeping deputy jailers and folks like that. So Understood. that's my position. What, uh, did you vote on the Sunday alcohol sales? No, that, that vote that, will come June 1st. Uh, so it was, the first reading was this first time? First reading, yes. And uh, well, you were quoted as saying, you know, your, the commission uh, was not for or against it, but when the city passed it, you felt after getting comments from uh, some competitors. No, forget the city. Okay. When we started getting comments from uh, folks outside the corporate limits of the city, that they were not on a level playing field, we felt it incumbent on the court to level the playing field. Got it. Uh, the district health department, this is from Susan, district health department was facing like a $2 million deficit this season. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, fiscal court supports them. They don't run the entire um, no, operation. No, we, we don't give them anything. Oh, okay. Fiscal court gives them nothing. They are a taxing entity in and of themselves we had a and that shows up on your tax bill on your tax bill is right. a separate line right. item just like the library just like the extension district the district uh green river district and it's composed of the same seven counties that our ad district is composed of they chose to come and ask for more money what that was going to entail would be a, a increase of almost 40, 60 percent, a 60 percent increase in the tax burden to Davis County taxpayers. I happen to serve by virtue of, of my elected office as the chair. Uh, I was able to convince the folks to raise the tax rate by a half a cent, uh, meaning somebody with a 
$100,000 home would pay an extra $5. And then pay out of our reserves the difference between that half cent and their um, assessment. Next year we will look at where we're at and we might raise it another half cent. The third year is a year when a one cent imposition will come off of their tax bill because the buildings will be paid for. Since I've been judged, we have been paying an extra seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year against the debt, so we can pay it early. Meaning that if we add that third half cent, which would get you up the one half cents they wanted, and take a cent off, our Davis County residents would yeah. be out a half cent, which is not bad considering <coughs> there has not been a tax increase since 1989. Now, they wanted to say that they hadn't had any increases in revenue since 89. I said, well, didn't property values go up right. over those years? So don't tell me they benefit. Had a, right. Of course they do. And uh, one thing about the tide, just a, a, a little side, we are limited by 4%. Period. Period. Without having... Health department's not. They could have a 10% increase in their revenues because of an assessment. They do not have to reduce their tax rates like counties and cities do. Well, when we get to, when we get to, <laughs> till you became a member of that board, I learned no office. until I started re researching it. Yes. <laughs> well, also on the uh, on the tax bill that you get, you know, of the if it's a two thousand dollar tax bill, less than thirty percent is actually going to the Davis County. Um, well, probably less even, than that. I'm not even sure. Let's let's say you're a county resident. Uh, Thirteen and a half cents for property tax. Uh, what two and a half right now three and a half cents so that's 14 17 cents for let's just go back 13 and a half cents probably 85 percent go to other agencies 15 yeah. 15 percent of that tax bill comes to us one of the line items is the library of mm -hmm. course and i george are you on that or, uh, charlie, charlie. It's, i'm sorry and they recently um back down from a, a quite an extensive a plan of building right. uh, and uh, what was the what was the thought process behind that Did the board just didn't get behind that or uh, well i think a couple things you you had a, a new a newcomer come in on uh, aaron the new aaron line library as, director. as director and also several new board members and and i think they kind of had a different philosophy um, and and I think um, I believe they're doing a better choice mm -hmm. by, by scaling back myself mm -hmm. I know Commissioner Wathen joined me at one of our meetings and, and let them know the fiscal court did not support this is back when Jim was still there mm -hmm. uh, that we did not support the direction they were going in with because ultimately they were going to be spending down their reserves, and, and they would be coming back for for uh, for tax increases, and and that's again that's that's back to my philosophy. That's not your friend, you know. If you if you go and and spend all you have and 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 have to bond money, you got to raise taxes to pay it. And so, remember, though, when you had the philosophy of money, if it's available, you'll spend it. Well, that's the philosophy of money. And I saw the other day and, and looked at it askance when I found the public library was talking about hiring a social worker. Yes. I'm wondering if they're not expanding the scope of their mission in the community because if we hire a social worker because we have folks who need those services, there are places for folks to get them. Yes. Well, what next? Do we hire a, a money counselor? Right. Uh, do, we no. do we bring in a physician's assistant? You have to look at your mission and your scope, and I think mission creep is one of the biggest things that happens to any agency, it happens to any department, and sometimes it happens to governments. When you start having a substantial amount of your budget going to things that are not streets and sidewalks and Transportate, public transportation, things that governments were established for. It's called mission creep. It's feel good, 
it's nice. You get lots of people who are going to vote for you to get you reelected, but is that really your job as an elected official? Well, so the not, other thing that I that I think that all of us share is is government's not the first place you should turn for for aid. Certainly right. with county government, yes. it's it's not the first place you should look. And earlier when you mentioned the when the judge mentioned the uh, uh, the agency funding, you know, and and when, when an agency is supported by the community, it's far easier for us to, to become a part of it. But but they didn't rely exclusively on us, you know. And and so you're not denying the need for social help. Absolutely you're just not. Not thinking, We're, we're thinking not you should go somewhere else. There, there are social. many many opportunities from the state. From the ad, from all other, there are all of an area, uh, grad, there are all sorts of public library is not the place to go. What do we do? Do we have a needle exchange set up in the public yep. library? You know, Commissioner Watson will tell you, we've had requests for funds, and what's the one thing we always talk about? Our dollar is last, last dollar in. Right. in. We want you to be out there raising funds. We want you to prove to us that there is a a need and community support. Hey, real quickly, uh, go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to yeah. say, I think what happens to a lot of these different organizations is if they stop looking outside of themselves. Right. You know, it's the silo that... It's silo, yeah. Uh, but but it, it, it has to do with, oh, you know, they look and they say, oh, we see a need and we need to help fix it mm -hmm. instead of saying, well, where is that already taken care right. of? And then the flip side of that is, also, I think they do that when they tax. A lot mm -hmm. of times people will say, as you said, they're saying, well, we haven't raised taxes in so many years. Well, maybe they haven't, and we, you know, but one of the, somebody else has. Yeah. Maybe the city, the city schools or the county schools or the OMU rate or, so, right. you know, maybe that particular organization has not raised taxes but the poor person out there paying is catching it from all different directions. Yeah. So yes, everybody should not raise taxes mm -hmm. as long as they can. They we should can do whatever about they gotta do. Let me get in two quick things. Okay. Uh, RWRA at Friendly Village, that's evidently ahead of schedule, is that right? Yes, um, yes. we're looking you, at, at perhaps what? engineering being done in August, bidding it out this year so that we can do the work next year and being done with that project in the fall of next year. That's amazing. We, last year, in effect, we will be two and a half years. There are places in the Commonwealth where they've been going on for five and six years and they've made no progress, so. Well, the big party is gonna be uh, in the Davis County Parks this summer. Uh, the parks are getting revved up for a lot of great events, but romp, I guess, has got, got to be one of the We're highlights. We're going to go romping down the path. And uh, any highlights there you want to, I mean, if, if you haven't been, you do need to go. This is an international uh, The highlight event. will be me taking Judy under the covered bridge. Oh, we got rid of the covered That's bridge. The we got rid of the covered. <laughs> we got rid of the covered no, bridge. No, we didn't. Oh, we we still got one. Yeah, still All right, got Judy, <laughs> under the covered bridge. Any update on the GE building? Uh, Nothing no, yet. No. Any Nothing other big yet. news you want to break right here, live television? Yeah, I'm going to just say that that <laughs> we need to tell everybody Memorial Day weekend's coming up, yes. and there's a lot of Memorial yes. Day events that, that they can that can attend. And just look in the paper or Google Memorial Day events in Owensboro. I'm sure you'll find them. And and attend at least one. The veterans will to. will appreciate it. And remember, Memorial Day is not just for veterans; it's for all those folks who have gone before us. Amen. Absolutely true. Thank you for joining us. We're out of time. We'll be back next month. Uh, for the next edition of Speak Up. Thanks for joining us tonight. Happy birthday. Thank you. Honesty. Pass it on. I walked you across the street. Thanks.